Good morning, Chairman McCain, uh, Senator Reid, and distinguished members of the committee. I want to thank you for the opportunity to appear here today to provide a current update on the progress achieved over the past year in support of the ongoing campaign to counter ISIL or Daesh in Iraq and Syria. I'm pleased to appear here this morning alongside Ms. Christine Warmoth. Ms. Warmoth is widely respected uh, throughout the Department of Defense, and we are most grateful to her uh, for, for her continued and strong support of our efforts at CENTCOM. I'll join Christine in making a few brief opening comments, and then we're prepared to answer your questions. Before providing a brief update on the counter-ISIL campaign, I did want to quickly address an important issue. As the Chairman mentioned, there is an ongoing DOD IG investigation looking into allegations concerning the processing of intelligence information by CENTCOM's intelligence directorate. Because the allegations are currently under investigation, it would be premature and inappropriate for me to discuss this matter. What I will say is I, I welcome uh, the DOD IG's oversight. And once the investigation is complete, based upon the findings, you can be assured that I will take appropriate actions. Again, I cannot speak to the specifics of the allegations. However, I would like to take this opportunity to provide some clarity with respect to how we use intelligence products and the critical work that we do. Because of the, nat uh, the nature of our mission at CENTCOM, we do have and rely on a robust intelligence enterprise to support the command. There are over 1,200 seasoned intelligence professionals that make up that enterprise, and they do exceptional work. And as a commander, I greatly value and seek their input and insights. I use the assessments that they provide me to, together with the inputs that I receive from a variety of sources that include my commanders on the ground, who I talk to almost every single day, and I consider this broad range of inputs when making my decisions. You know, there's been a lot of speculation in the media about the allegations made to the DODIG, and one in particular, I believe, should be addressed and corrected for the record. Some have expressed concern that CENTCOM intelligence reports are sent directly to the President. This is not accurate. As the Office of the Director of National Intelligence put out to the media last week, and I quote, none of the combatant commands are permitted to engage directly in the President's daily, uh, daily brief process. Rather, reports are produced by the combatant commands and funneled through the DIA to ensure that all substantive deliberations and final contributions are appropriately, appropriately coordinated, end of quote. Again, I cannot comment on the specific allegations. We will need to wait for the DODIG to complete its investigation. But I did want to provide this additional clarification. Ladies and gentlemen, with respect to the ongoing operations in Iraq and Syria today, despite some slow movement at the tactical level, we continue to make progress across the battle space in support of the broader U.S. government strategy to degrade and ultimately defeat ISIL. Key to the to the enduring success of the military campaign is sustained pressure on ISIL, both from the air and on the ground. And the approach that we adopted relies on indigenous forces to create and sustain this pressure, while also curbing the flow of foreign fighters and cutting off the enemy's ability to resource himself. In recent months, Iraq's security for forces have experienced some setbacks, and this is to be expected in the early stages of a fight as complex as this one. But overall, enabled by coalition airstrikes and our advise and assist in building partner capacity efforts, the Iraqis continue to make progress. In northern Iraq, the Kurdish Peshmerga have performed exceptionally well, and the Kurdish Arab coalition in northeast Syria is also achieving substantial effects. In fact, over the past several months, they've retaken more than 17,000 square kilometers of terrain from the enemy and the effects that they have achieved serve to create significant opportunities that, if pursued, could prove devastating for the enemy. The intent of the military campaign is to degrade and ultimately defeat the enemy through our own actions and by enabling and supporting the efforts of our coalition partners and the indigenous forces in Iraq and Syria. And again, progress is being made, and this is evidenced by what we see, see happening in the air and on the ground in both countries. I would also point out that the progress reflects, in large part, the many contributions made by our coalition partners. The 60-plus nation coalition represents the strength of this campaign, and we remain grateful for their strong support. Success in this campaign will require the continued support of our coalition partners 
along with the support of other elements of the U.S. government and the international community. More importantly, it will require that the Iraqis do what is necessary to address their political challenges. And national re reconciliation is absolutely essential to the success in the counter-ISIL campaign. We said at the outset that the military, military campaign to counter ISIL would take time, and it will take time. And we should expect that there will be occasional setbacks along the way, particularly in the er early stages. We also need to keep in mind that we are supporting and enabling this effort, and our partners, not us, are in the lead. It is taking a bit longer to get things done, but it must be this way if we are to achieve lasting and positive effects. Fortunately, amidst, all the, amidst the many challenges that exist in Iraq and Syria, we find opportunities, and we remain confident that our actions in pursuit of these opportunities will continue to produce positive results in the coming days. Mr. Chairman, Senator Reid, members of the committee, I want to thank you once again for the strong support that you show to our service members, our civilians, and their families. They are truly exceptional, and they are making important and lasting contributions to the overall effort. Again, we appreciate your support, and I look forward to answering your questions.